<coughs> Dear students, I am Dr. Nusrat Gul and today we are going to discuss interference by electromagnetic waves. Now, interference can be explained on the basis of wave theory of light. So, we know that wave has a dual character. Sometimes it shows a wave character, like in this case, interference, diffraction, and sometimes it may show particle character. Today we will be discussing the property of interference by waves, electromagnetic waves, where wave character of light plays its role. Interference occurs when two or more waves pass through the same region of space at the same time. So two waves interfere when both of them pass through the same region and at the same time. If two waves are in different region of space, they won't interfere. And if one wave passes and is followed by the other, that means there's a, there is some time delay, again, there won't be any interference. For interference in, to occur, the two waves must pass through the same region of space at the same time. Waves show interference as per the superposition principle. What is the superposition principle? It states that when two waves interfere, the resulting displacement at any location is the vector sum of the displacement of the individual waves at the same location. That is, I will show you, try to explain this. It was like this. We have got a wave. We have got another wave. We have to remember that when these two waves interfere, when these two waves interfere, at every point, the resultant is the vector sum. For example, at this point, let us say this point, both the waves are at zero, so the vector sum is zero. Since these two waves are in the same direction, that means this and the same point here, it will be like this. So the vector addition will be equal to their sum. Simply, it will be equal to the, their sum. But in case the two waves are like this, one is directed like this and another is directed like this, in that case, the vector, these two will, uh, these two will, we must say, destroy each other and the vector sum will amount to uh, almost, it will be, it, it will almost, it will almost destroy each other and the vec vector sum here will be equal to zero. So that is what we mean by saying that, uh, interference, um, what we mean by saying superposition principle is that the two waves interfere, the resulting displacement. Here we saw it is the addition of the two. Here we saw it is the subtraction of the two. Basically, it is neither addition nor a subtraction. It is a vector sum. Here the two vectors will add up being in the same direction and here the two vectors will subtract being in the opposite direction. Interference effects can be observed with all types of waves. For example, light, radio, acoustic, surface, surface water waves, gravity waves, or matter waves. The resulting images or graphs are called interferograms. Interference results from the interaction of waves that are correlated or coherent with each other, either because they come from the same source or because they have the same or nearly the same frequency. Now, we have got different types of interference. The interference may be either constructive or it may be destructive. Before discussing these constructive and destructive interference, let us understand the conditions that are necessary for interference. Condition one, the two sources should emit continuously 
waves of same wavelength or frequency. The amplitude of the two waves should be either or nearly equal. This is for complete interference. The two sources should be narrow. The sources should be close to each other. The two sources should be coherent. That is, sources which either have no phase difference or have a constant phase difference between them. We will be understanding about this phase difference as the, this lecture progresses. Constructive interference occurs when the two interfering waves have a displacement in the same direction. As I show, the two waves must have the inter uh, should have a displacement in the same direction. That is, it should be something like this: one wave like this, and another wave like this. The two waves should have the same direction. Then they will show constructive interference, meaning thereby these two will add up and the resultant will be equal to the sum of these two individual waves. That is what we call as constructive interference. That is one wave constructs the other way. wave, they magnify each other. Both waves have an upward displacement. Consequently, the medium has an upward displacement. As I have already explained, when both the waves have upward displacement, the medium has an upward displacement that is greater than the displacement of the two interfering pulses. That means if this is, um, I must have just put some diagram, it's like this. The two waves are moving towards each other. Here, at this point of time, and in this region of space, they will interfere. Since the two pulses, pulse A and pulse B, they are in the same direction, both have got upward moment, the resultant will be equal to the sum of the two. It it will be it the amplitude will be almost double A or double B. And when the wave progresses after this interfering region, they will continue to move, but in the opposite direction. Here we saw it is B, here we saw it is A, and here we saw it is A, here it will be B. They will interfere here, and after that, they will move as they did before interfering. Right? So only in this region, where both the waves are present together in this region. This is moving towards this, this is moving towards this. At a point of time, both of these will be here. The two will add up, giving rise to this. And afterwards, the two will again move. But the difference will be B is moving in this direction, so we are finding it here. And A is moving in this direction, that's why we are finding it here. It may be observed when both interfering waves are displaced downwards. This is shown in the diagram below for two downward displacement, displaced pulses. It is not necessary that the two waves will show interference uh, only when they are in the, when, when the displacement is upward direction. Even when the displacement is downward direction, like this, this and this. Here in this region of space, they are moving towards each other and somewhere here they will interfere, right? And the resultant will be equal to the sum of the two. After interfering, they will proceed like this, the red wave will move in this region and the blue wave will move in this region. As we are uh, just observing, red wave is moving towards right and uh, this blue wave is moving towards left. After interference, what we will see, we will say red wave in the right region and blue wave in the left. So let us discuss the conditions for constructive interference. Constructive interference occurs when the maximum of two waves add together. That is, the two waves are in phase, so that the amplitude of the resulting wave is equal to the sum of the individual amplitudes. Equivalently, the minimum of the waves would be aligned. Meaning, thereby, if we have got these two waves, this is blue wave and this is our red wave. Let us try and understand how constructive interference will occur. We see there is Minima, it starts, the wave starts here, it is in a phase, right? The peak, blue peak, and this is the red peak. Here we see, this is the peak, and when these two waves overlap, the peaks will overlap, they will add up. Similarly, here the valleys will add up. Corresponding to the peak, we have again got a peak. So what happens basically, this peak and the, this peak, they add up and give rise to this. This is a resultant wave. Valley and valley, the amplitude of the valley is increased. 
this is how the wave progresses so when the two waves start in phase the two waves undergo constructive interference where the peaks are aligned with peaks and the minima are aligned with minima here blue and this green wave they give rise to a resultant wave that has got the greater amplitude than both the blue and the green wave as these two vectorly add up two waves will show constructive interference when the two waves are in phase r but this is what we um, explained in phase r the path difference is n lambda phase difference is 2 n pi where n is an integer and n is equal to 0 1 2 and 3 let us try and understand this they are in phase they have started at the same point now let us say this this uh, blue wave it starts it starts somewhere here let us say first here here if it starts here and what will happen if it starts here what's the starting in the starting we find a peak peak will align with a valley so this will be destructive interference there won't be any constructive interference let us move ahead if it starts from this point what will happen this blue valley starts starts this blue wave starts from this point what will happen it will overlap like this that means peak aligns with the peak and valley aligns with the valley and where does, does it happen it happens at a path difference of this and what it is equal to it is equal to lambda so when the path difference between the two waves this wave and this wave is lambda and the phase difference pi plus pi 2 pi what we find we find constructive we get constructive inter interference either the two waves have to start in phase peak and peak have to start together or if there is a path difference the path difference has to be n lambda and the phase difference has to be 2 n lambda so that the two waves constructively interfere now is there a chance that if the two waves two waves show constructive interference when they start out of phase is there a chance yes definitely there is two waves may show constructive interference even if they start out of phase simply when one of the waves starts ahead of the other wave by pi or n pi where n is an odd integer or by a path difference of n lambda by 2 where n is again an odd integer let us try and understand it okay let us uh, draw two waves that are out of phase let one of the waves be this like this and the other wave let it be like this let the other way be like this it is something like this okay the two waves are out of phase fine so here is a peak is a valley here is this is what will happen if they start together if this wave this wave number 2 if it starts ahead of wave number 1 and they it starts somewhere here what will happen this it will start like this okay like this so what will be the result the result will be even though the waves are out of phase yet this wave this second wave when it starts at a path difference of lambda by 2 this length is equal to lambda by 2 or a phase difference of lambda what we get we will get constructive interference again let me try and erase it certain points okay oh this all got erased sorry now again we have to show a wave that is out of phase 
Now, I explained it at pi. Now, uh, what we do, here we saw constructive interference. If we started here, it will be starting from this point, again, destructive interference. How can we get constructive interference if we start here? At this point of time, if we start at this point of time, so there's a valley, there's a valley. What's the power difference? Lambda, 2 lambda, and 3 lambda. So if the, rather it is not lambda, it's lambda by 2, 2 lambda by 2, and 3 lambda by 2. When the wave starts at lambda by 2, or 3 lambda by 2, or 5 lambda by 2, or we may say n lambda by 2, the two waves, despite being out of phase, will result in constructive interference, right? And there, the phase difference will be pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, or we may say n pi, when n is an odd integer. So this is about constructive interference. We saw that when the two waves are in phase, they will show constructive interference, but they may show constructive interference. There may be constructive interference, even if the two waves are out of phase, but the second wave has to be ahead of the first wave by pi. Here we say this valley and this valley will match or by 3 pi or what we say 3 lambda by 2. Again here, this valley and this valley will match. Now, destructive interference occurs at any location along the medium where the two interfering waves have a displacement in the opposite direction. This destruction is not permanent condition. When it is said that the two pulses destroy each other, what is meant is that when overlap, the effect of one of the pulses on the displacement of a given particle of the medium is destroyed or cancelled by the effect of the other pulse. Once the two pulses pass through each other, there is still an upward displacement pulse and a downward displacement pulse heading in the same direction as they were heading before the interference. So, this is pulse A, this is pulse B, this is heading right, this is heading left. What, what, what we see? What we see? Here, somewhere here, they will interfere somewhere here. And when they interfere, since they are in the opposite direction, they will destroy each other. This will be the resultant wave, right? This is destructive interference. And this pulse B was moving towards uh, this left, and we see pulse B in the left direction after this interference pattern, and we see A in the right direction as we have observed it was moving in the right direction. Again, this is before interference, they are moving like this, right, uh, this red moving towards right, blue moving towards left. Here they destructively interfere because they are in opposite directions. Afterwards, what we will see, here we will observe the red pulse in the right hand side and we will observe the blue pulse in the left hand side as blue pulse was moving towards left hand side and red pulse was moving towards right hand side. Now conditions for destructive interference. Destructive interference occurs when the maximum of one wave adds to the minimum of the other wave and the vector sum of the two waves is equal to zero. Waves show destructive interference when they are out of phase and like this here we see they start together, but this peak aligns with the valley. This valley aligns with the peak. Again, this peak aligns with the valley. The resultant here is zero. That's what is observed in the this resultant wave. The two waves have destroyed each other because they are, they are out of phase and the vector sum at each point. These two waves nullify each other and we get a zero wave. Again, we may get destructive interference when the path difference is. It has started somewhere here. If it starts here, when they start to get the destructive interference, if they start here, again, it will be it will be constructive interference because this blue, it, the, it starts as a valley. So we have to start from the valley, right? Now, in order to get the destructive interference, what has to be done? Let us see. Let us see what has to be done. 
this uh this this second wave it has to start somewhere here right so that this blue it starts from this point from the from the valley that will result in destructive interference this point cancels out uh, this point this point cancels out this point every point cancels the other every other point right so if it starts from this point what we will observe we will again observe this destructive interference and what is the distance this distance is equal to lambda and the phase difference path difference is equal to lambda and the phase difference is equal to 2n lambda where n is an odd integer in this case it is 2 lambda right in this case this is 2 lambda now we may again observe let me erase it let me erase this can we again observe this uh, destructive interference? Yes, we may. We may observe the destructive interference here also. Here. If the second wave starts here, it starts from the valley. Valley, valley. It starts from the valley. So what is the, what is the distance? Path, path. What is the path difference? This is lambda and 2 lambda. And what is the phase difference? This is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi, right? So in these cases, when the two waves have certain path difference and phase difference, we get destructive interference. Now the question arises again, can we have this destructive interference when the two waves start in phase? Definitely we may. Two waves may show destructive interference even if they start in phase, simply when one of the waves starts ahead of the other wave, by pi or n pi, where n is an odd integer, or by a path difference of n lambda by 2, where n is again an odd integer. These two waves are, they are out of phase, right? Just one moment, eraser. They will show, uh, when they start together, they will show disrupt interference. But can two waves that are in phase like this, let me, let me, let me show this. This is one wave. This is a wave. Can two waves show this uh, destructive interference if they start in phase? They cannot, if they start from the same point, they won't be able to. Can we have some other color? I guess, yes, we may. Okay, let me use the eraser first. Okay. This is one view. Let us go for the second wave. Second wave will be like this. We have to start, uh, we, we have to, uh, how we have to take the two, Waves, we have to take them in phase and see if the destructive interference can be shown by the in phase waves. In phase wave will start somewhere here. Let us see that this wave starts here. So, this is constructive interference. Can these two waves show destructive interference? Definitely. Yes, they may. How? Let us see. If the second wave starts somewhere here, what will be the result? It will be like this. The two waves are in phase, so peak, this will start from a peak, this will start from a peak, right? So it will again show this constructive interference. Despite being this in phase, it will show destructive. I'm sorry, it will show destructive interference. So what will be what will be the path difference for destructive interference? It must be lambda by two here. What about phase difference? It is pi here. Let us see where it will show again this. Uh, where it will show again destructive interference. Let us see and let me erase it again. 
okay we have to start out of phase here if we start somewhere here here right the wave has to be in phase it will start with a peak so again we observed here it will show this destructive interference now two waves may show destructive interference even if they start in phase provided the first uh, source and the second source have a certain path difference and a certain phase difference the path difference has to be either lambda by 2 or 3 lambda by 2 or 5 lambda by 2 meaning there right the path difference has to be n lambda by 2 and the phase difference has to be uh, this pi or 3 pi or 5 pi that is n pi where n is an odd integer i hope it is clear so we may observe destructive interference even when the two waves start in phase when the two sources have a certain path difference and phase difference. Thank you very much. Hope you understood the lecture. If you understood it, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks once more.